I am Jorge Barroso. Okay, I'm the first one, the, the big name, Jorge Juan Barroso. Uh, I am from Spain. For this reason, I have two names and two surnames. Okay, uh, and the other guys uh, work with me uh, in Karumi. Uh, this this talk is about uh, Rossi. Rossi is a, a framework. Okay, it's a framework that we created for create uh, application for create a clean architecture application. Uh, we created uh, by the three guys, and for this reason, they are in the in the in the title. Uh, we are going to we are going to look how the we are going to try to explain a few clean architecture, but the deep is how it's implemented, what problem we found, and uh, how we implemented. And this is not about selling the framework because it's free, it's in GitHub. Okay, this is about how to explain, how to create this kind of code. Uh, I'm Jorge Barroso. I am Android developer in and co-founder from Karumi, and uh, I am GDE, Android GDE. There's a lot of GDEs there in the in the conference. Uh, this is my email, Jorge at uh, Karumi.com. You can send me uh, your best pictures, uh, your family, travel, holidays, pictures, what you want, and questions. Uh, this is the, my Twitter. Uh, if you want to follow me, I prefer that you follow in Twitter and not uh, by the street. Thank you. And the last one is the, is the Google+. Plus. Okay, this is for make my, my own CEO. When you search in Google, Jorge Barroso appear me and not other Jorge Barroso. Okay, uh, I work in Karumi. This is a, a small ad. Uh, I work in Karumi. Karumi is a company, it's a small development company, and we made three things. The first one is we made applications uh, for the big, uh, for companies. Other one is we work with teams. Some teams uh, hire us, and we're working close to the to the uh, to the teams, and we are trying to learn to the people, so to the people who develop good code, a good architecture, testing code, these kind of things. At the same time that we build applications or features. For example, right now I am working with IBM, with IBM Research uh, from New York, and we are working with them, uh, helping to to improve the quality of the researchers' code. Okay, and uh, and we give talk, uh, we give uh, training. This is we have training for companies and training for everybody. So if somebody if somebody is interested, uh, uh, I can uh, can can talk with me after the the presentation. And uh, we launched a, a product. Is this really good? It's Flow Up. We launched it uh, three months ago or four months ago, and it's with, with, line, with one line of code, you can take a lot of stats from your users in the performance uh, in the in the performance uh, uh, point of view. Okay, is the the uh, FPS, the memory sets, the network connections, and this data from your from your customers and not uh, for testing. You can you can test. It's free for for testing, and uh, if you are interested, you can talk with me after after the talk. Okay, we are going to go in deep. Why create a clean architecture framework if clean architecture is going to go away to the framework? That's a good question, okay? This is because uh, we have a problem. We are a, a company that we are developing application. We develop a lot of application in a short of time, and we want to remove a lot of boilerplate code. We want to create, we want we want to iterate it over the applications and not over the frameworks, and not write uh, and again and again the same code. This is the way that, that we created. Okay, uh, we were created. Uh, I think so. We spent one year and a half iterating over the architecture. In the f in, in the first project that I make, I extract the base code, all boilerplate code, and put in other project. And in each new application that we created from the company we start to use from this one. And we say, okay, this is more or less stable, this is working on a lot of fun applications, we are going to the open to the community. And we launched Rossi, okay? If you go to the, to the Karumi uh, the GitHub repository, you can, you can access to Rossi, as a lot of people using inside and outside, but a lot of people is using for learn clean architecture, okay? How many people there know who clean architecture is? More or less everybody. Well, okay, I am not going. I am not going in deep, but I'm going to give some clues. Okay, because it's not. I'm not going to finish the presentation in time. Okay. Um, why create this framework? But I say is because every three months, every two months, we were creating a new product. We are creating new applications for companies. And I say, okay, 
Uh, I don't want to start from, from scratch. I don't want to start from zero. I want to start from a point that I have a lot of things to do, okay? That time that you create a new project and you, okay, I need to add uh, Dagger, I need to configure Dagger, I need to create my presenters, I need to configure my repositories, and a lot of boilerplate code, okay? For this reason, we want to remove the boilerplate code, okay? That code that is in all our applications. And we want to have an easy way to evolve and change our applications. For example, uh, I found a new way to to work with errors, I only need to move to to the to the clean, to the Rossi framework. Or for for example, uh, the first versions work with uh, auto. I found that this is a crappy thing. That is not a good idea. I use a bus system for communicating our applications. I remove from the framework. Okay, I search all the way, and because allow to me create testable code. Okay, it's really important for us in Karumi create testable code, and if I have a way to allow to me create in an easy way code that is testable, code that can inject the dependencies, that I can work and is think it for uh, create code that you can test, is good enough. And for the people that are trying to use this kind of frameworks, it's, uh, it's uh, mandatory for their create testable that is uh, test a code, code that is testable, because it's not you can don't use the, the framework and make open source. This is because uh, we search two ways we make open source. The first one is we want the community feedback. We want the people to say, this is not good. Uh, do you think in this case? This is not think in this one. Why don't you use this one? And this is really good enough for us. Listen to the people, learn from the people. And the other one is to force to us to go out from the application, create generic code, create code that we can, re, uh, we can uh, reuse, we can use in other applications. Uh, it's based in clean architecture. This is our vision of clean architectures. Okay, clean architectures is created by, is defined by, uh, by Martin, uh, by Robert C. Martin, my uncle Bob. And he give a clues, he give uh, directions, don't give an implementation, okay? This is our implementation of uh, of uh, clean architecture, okay? Clean architecture say that we need to uh, hide dependencies, okay? We need to go out from the, uh, go out for the implementation details, okay? For this reason, the domains models can go out to the layers, to the view layers and the data layers, but not the opposite. You can have a dependency in your, in your mind from the view or in your mind from the that the, for the database, okay? Dependencies go out from the center to the to the to the to the uh, hardware side, but not in the opposite. And the other one, the other way is use adapters, is use adapters uh, classes to hide the implementation details. We are going to use two design patterns as these uh, adapters are the model view presenter and a repository pattern. I'm going to explain. Uh, this one in deep, okay? Uh, the other important thing is we take the decision because most of application that we made is an application that go to a server, go to a backend, obtain information, and draw. Somebody have this problem? Nobody, no? Okay, it's the, it's the non most application in the stores. And we, are, we don't have a really, uh, dependency of the flow of the, of the way. We don't need to compute, to, to compose information. We don't need to uh, make a lot of requests from, from obtain one or do great things or have a chat, this kind of things. And for this reason, we are creating code synchronous from the, from the user's cases, from the domain to, to, the, to the data layer. Uh, we can add a synchronous code there, it's working. I have an application, use Rossi, that is a chat, um, but the point of view changes a few, okay? But it's more or less the same. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the first one, the UI layer. Uh, the idea for the UI layer is divide the UI framework from UI logic. Our fragments and activities only draw information and set animations. They don't have logic. 
you never found a if in an activity or in a fragment. It's possible one, two, but they don't take logic. They don't make logic. They only take values and set the values in the views. That's all. For this reason, all activities or fragments are really, 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 really small. All core custom views are really small because they don't have logic. This is going to be uh, this is going to be half a really good thing. It's going to be half a really good thing because we are going to kind improve the UI testing. Right now, we can, for example, mock the presenter and only test the UI uh, with uh, with the with Espresso, and you only take and you only don't have problems with threads, don't have problems with, with uh, uh, either resources because all all always happening in the same thread. Okay, that's good enough. And the other thing is we can test the presenters. We can test the presenters to the domain layer or the data layer. We can have integration tests. Okay, it's easy. Put the mock, or we can change in an easy way the 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 size of the the scope of the testing. Okay, this is an implementation we are using right now. A thing that is a, a passive view. It's a present. It's a border view presenter architecture with a passive view. This is for this reason is, okay, it's a presenter. The center make the logic of the application, activities, fragments, services, blah, 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 is, uh, is binding the information with the, with the UI, and we have a view. This view is an interface that allow the define, the define the operations that I can do over my views, okay? And if in semi-transparent, it's a presentation model, because this is a model that we create if the, we receive the, the domain models, models from the domain, and the job appear, and if I, I need something, for, for example, compute information, or transform a string, or transform a date to uh, science two days, or science one minute ago, that kind of things, we are going to, the, in the presenter, I'm going to create that presentation's models, but sometimes are not mandatory. Okay. How, uh, how uh, uh, Rossi helped you to make this one? Okay, it's easy. Uh, we have a Rossi activity. We create the framework, uh, we create some helpers uh, with extension or with uh, inheritance because, uh, because Android is an extension framework. It's really easy to go out to composition sometimes. You can use a Rossi uh, using composition, but this kind of classes is going to help you to remove more boilerplate, okay? It's really easy. You need to extend the Rossi uh, activity. It's going to give you some things. On the other one, you need to implement the presenter view, okay? And we give you some, some stuff, like the presenter annotation. If you have a presenter, you give you the presenter, and he is going to hide the life of cycle of your presenter. We are going to view in in the, in, a, in a slide, okay? And in the Rossi activity, you have a method that you can implement it at this uh, on prepare presenter. This is because it's for resolve a problem of inversion of control. Sometimes you need to provide information to the presenters before the life cycle start. For example, give them some arguments or give some information or prepare the presenter. This allow to you inject information before the life cycle start, okay? And the code for the presenter is easy. It's you send to the presenter and you say, what is the presenter view that's going to implement it? And he gives you some, uh, some methods. This method, we take all life cycle of activities, or all, all, all life cycle of, the, of services and custom views and this uh, and fragments, and we reduce in the four that are important for all application. Init, update, pull, pause, and destroy. Okay, uh, remember when you use a model view presenter, the activity must be agnostic, the view must be agnostic to the execution of the application. And in this way, it's a magic code there, we are going to be going deep, it's a magic code deck that are linking, are, are invoking this method for you, okay? And when the application start, invoke the initialize, when application go to, to the foreground, uh, execute the date, and pause and destroy, okay? And we have this one. When you want to invoke to something in the view, to something to the activity of the fragment, you use get view, okay? Uh, we are going to 
uh, we are going to check why you're using get view and not the view directly. Okay, this is because we are going to avoid null pointers using this one. And this is the implementation of the view that activities are, or fragments are going to implement. Easy, no? It's really easy. You have a lot of magic. You don't need to uh, talk with the framework, with the lifecycle, and you don't need to fight with that kind of things. You only write the binding content activities. You define your interfaces in the view, and you have uh, and you have your presenters. Okay. The uh, the idea is we need to extract. We want to extract some code, a lot of code that is repeating in all this stuff. Close the get views. Uh, destroy instances, no memory leaks, and we move this to up. For this reason, we create the presenter life cycle. Okay, uh, is we we want to uh, reduce all that code that are creating everything to in initialize and create things, and that is making is he has go he is going to uh, check every class that is annotated with the presenter annotation, and is going to inflate the presenters, create a link to the view. Okay, and he is going to keep the, the views and the presenters cycle, uh, life cycle to avoid uh, memory leaks, okay, for you. And uh, we want to avoid null pointers. This is the other one. This is the normal one when you are making a request from activity or from a presenter or fragment uh, that when the API call back, uh, the fragment doesn't exist or the activity doesn't exist and your application crash. Okay, we say, okay, we are going to remove this one. And for this reason, we create the get view. The method get view that we are doing, you can have different options, or first option is using a nullable object. The problem that the nullable object pattern is that you need to create from a type of, of T. And you can create on fly an object that is from kind of T. That we use it is uh, 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 a uh, pattern that is called dynamic proxy. How many people there know dynamic proxy pattern? Okay. Dynamic proxy pattern is a pattern that you tell to the, to the garbage collector, sorry, to the Java virtual machine. Okay, when it's going to execute this method, and when I tell you invoke this method, uh, tell me to me. I am going to execute code or before or after to the execution of the method. For example, a mockito, or when you create a mock, make this one. When you say, okay, when I want to call this method, call this information, this is a, a dynamic proxy. Or for example, JSPET uh, made in the past, when you are just to execute things after or before for a method. That we are doing is, we are creating this uh, invocation handler, this is going to be the dynamic proxy, and we are, we are taking, okay, where invoke, do nothing, okay? When you evoke, do nothing. This is the, the handler. And we say, okay, search the classes, create the classes, and when somebody invoke to the method view, you replace for this one, okay? What is going to happen? It's going to happen, this reset method is going to call in the destroy. When the activity destroy or when something destroy, we are creating, we are changing the view for this null object pattern. And when you call get view, Get view, make nothing, and we created an optional. Okay, we created an optional with a method that made nothing, and the code in the view is not going to be present, and we're going to allow a lot of null pointers. <sighs> okay, domain layer. Uh, for the domain layer, the most important is that there is our application. This is the core of our application. Okay, this is the old code uh, that is important for our business. And there is going to be classes. For example, if I'm going to make an, a feed of photos, this is going to be the photo object, the user object, the feed element, okay? It's the, or the core of application. There is nothing about databases, there's nothing about to draw, there's nothing about to all this one. And they are going to have operations. Uh, they are going to have operations that are going to be executed. We are going to call this operation use cases. Use cases are classes that are modeled with a verb. Okay, because our actions over our software, our actions over our domain layer, for example, get user, they turn to me a user, uh, edit user, modify a user, delete user, delete the user. Okay, and it's easy to find. If we put all together all use case of our application in a package, these use cases and all classes 
all together, when I open this package, I can view all actions that are going to be executed over all the mine. And it's really easy because I say, okay, this edit user in my application, I'm going to explain the package, say, oh, it's not there. Imagine that I work with a lot of projects. Sometimes I need to come back to a project that I create six, nine months maybe before, a month ago. I don't remember how it works. I don't remember how it's implemented. But I'm going to say, okay, this is implemented. Ah, it's not implemented, modify. Ah, but it's implemented at user. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to duplicate at user. I'm going to modify to modify and don't use this one, okay? And use cases are like a receipt, a cooking receipt is made this one, made this one, for example, get the user, obtain a user, modify data, store the user. They don't make actions, they don't make choose options, not in the most of the time. They only execute call, call by call, line, line by line, okay? This is the diagram, we have the my models, are models of the domain, the users, the feed, the photo, we have rich models. How many people know who is a rich model? A rich model is a model that have operations. For example, if I have the fit, fit could be a could be a could be a, a class that inside have as a new fit entry, remove a, a new fit entry, count the number of fit entry we have. Or for example, a user can uh, have a method that is gate h that I give I give the uh, a time and he return. 34 ages and calculated from the from the date of birth. Okay, this is a rich model. It's a model that have operations, and rich models could be called to uh, databases or could be uh, can have dependencies of the of the data layers. Okay, and this is really important. We recommend it's not mandatory, but we recommend that the object that go move out of the domain be always uh, immutable, because because if you only work with mutable in one place, that is the, the data, data layer, okay? If I only mute objects in the data layer, I don't, got, I don't going to have problems. If I have a mutation problem, I, only, uh, I know where it is. It's always going to be in, me, in my uh, data layer, okay? Because you don't need it, mute models in the view because it's no responsibility of the view mute models, change the name or change the name user. Okay, if you want to edit a user, create with a builder a new user and send to the domain and send to the data layer and there is execution of the mutation, okay? Okay, please, it's easy to create immutables object in your code. Don't create setters, it's really easy. You don't create setters, you only create uh, constructors, Every, every, everything is final, and getters. If you want to modify an object, you need to create a new object. It's good, okay, it's easy. Or you can create an, interfa an interface called immutable object, where you implement the getters, and when you return the object, return this interface, instead of return the object, okay? People can make up cast, okay? But if you make it, you can punch in his face, okay? Uh, what we uh, what uh, we are doing for from this one, okay? Uh, we created a, a framework, okay? One thing what we're doing is use cases invoke as common pattern, okay? It's operation. I'm going to execute like a command, and we created a system to execute this one. We get, we use uh, create uh, use case, uh, use case call, okay? With the name of the class, an instance of the class, and we can uh, give args and a name. Name is for avoid, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to explain in deep, but name is, uh, if two methods have the same signature, could it happen, is for this thing, this one. Because what I'm going to do, when you going to execute this call, this use case, he's going to be on the, on the, on the, on the class, and he's going to search a method that allow these arguments, okay? This is making uh, down casting, it's making change, uh, it's making change, uh, if you receive an integer and you pass an int, or the auto-boxing, this may go all thing for you. It's going to share the method and it's going to be invoked. And uh, we have an answer test where it's calling the, the responses, okay? When execution finishes, the response is going to be an answer test. 
and it's an error is going to uh, appear in own error. Uh, it's going to be executed, okay? Uh, if you check this one, okay, you don't know anything about threads, about the uh, handlers, about UI, it's all out of your, uh, of, of your importance. The framework make all this for you, okay? If I want to use a, a use case, I use the, you can do for, for composition, but you have Rossi use case uh, method that you can use. You, if you want to invoke a, a method, you say, okay, this method is a use case. You add an annotation. Uh, our classes only have, most of them only have one method, okay? But sometimes some people, in some cases, we have more than one, and say, okay, we can allow that you have more than one. And you create a method, and he is going to search a method that the signature is an string, and another is a string. It's going to send the arguments, and it's magic, and I'm going to uh, invoke this one. And uh, when we, for example, in this case, we obtain comics, and notify the comics, okay? Notify success is because sometimes we want to notify more than one time from with the data. For example, I obtain the comics, come from the database, but are old, but I want to draw, I notify with the old data, and I continue the execution, I go to the API, I notify with the new data. That's good enough. And if I want to send an error, I, got, I can, for example, in this case, it's because there's a data session, I can generate an error answer. Uh, I don't want to talk about error, but uh, Rossi have uh, three ways to manage errors. Uh, every generic errors go, all errors go for a flow, the code, the normal path of code, and the error code, and in, dif in different ways. And errors uh, go for a, you can generate your own errors, or every error that's generated in the application, you have a factory that converts exceptions on errors for your application, okay? And you can manage in the generic way, or you can manage for only for one uh, use case, okay? <coughs> you, as you see, uh, use cases are, are a sync, okay? You execute the use case and have the callback. And who make this one? Okay, this is important. We created, we want to extract this one from the execution, okay? Uh, because, because we want to be able to execute the test in a same way, or execute with, uh, uh, with a thread, or execute with a handler, or with whatever, no? And we extract the information, we have the task scheduler, it's going to be uh, execute the, the task, the, the use cases, and the error is going to manage all kind of error that the application uh, generate. Okay, the task scheduler is an interface that all it make is, uh, is wrap the use case that's going to be executed, okay, it's executed. And uh, this is an implementation of a task scheduler with a priority of queue. And you say, we are straight in this one. We can use this one with priority of queue, but we have other task scheduler that is synchronous for testing, and we have other with threads. It's uh, using a, 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 a system of threads. And I think so somebody creates something using Rx Java, okay? Uh, avoid memory leaks. Uh, one thing that's very important is uh, when you are creating a library, it's really important don't keep instance of the heavy code, because if you make this one, it's going to be a problem. You are going to have a problem, because you are, it's possible that you are leaking a lot of memory. You are leaking the activities, and you are leaking the fragments, and it's going to consume a lot of memory. For this reason, uh, we make this create this call. Uh, all the internal library is working with a uh, weird reference, okay? A weird reference, anybody know what is a weird reference? Okay. A weird reference is a reference that is uh, allowing to a section of memory. And when this memory don't have any reference, it's going to disappear too, okay? Is that a string? And I have a weird reference for the string. And when the garbage collector say, okay, this reference is working, okay, it's perfect. But when this disappear, the weird reference is going to disappear too. Okay, and this is, go this is good for uh, don't keep memory that disappear. For example, the activity, when the activity disappear, our framework is going to avoid to disappear activity and it's going to fail. And we created the, and, and we are making is presenters take, uh, presenters take a reference, need to take a reference of the use cases for can execute, because it's, we created in a method, when the method disappear, the garbage collector is going to disappear and all is going to be crap. 
and for this reason we create this one. We retain the use cases, and when the presenter die, the use cases is going to be die. When you, it's going to be destroyed, it's going to be destroyed. Okay, uh, a use case is only the arguments, and the use case name is optional, and the callbacks. And the callbacks are with reference. For this reason, we need to retain. Uh, one thing I, I don't explain this one because it's really big is how to make the parts. Okay, we have a, an engine that this parser and making up casting and upper casting. If you, for example, pass an, 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 an object, but the use case if the parent of the object is working and make do the casting, or if you, or if you pass an integer it's between it and this kind of thing. Oh, we have problem with list of because if you pass a list of, of a super object, uh, Java don't have covariance and uh, invariance, and we can make anything. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, data layer. Uh, our vision of the data layer, we are trying to ha uh, hide dependencies. Okay. If we want to hide dependencies, our idea is be agnostic of the origin of the data. Okay. I don't, for me, it's not important if the data comes from the API or comes from the cache or comes from the whatever, okay? For me, it's indifferent. And it's a pattern that gives me, uh, to me, this one. It's the repository pattern, okay? This is a repository pattern, but we create, we add it to the pattern to uh, stuff, okay? Uh, the repository pattern uh, gives to you the option to obtain an object and you don't know where it comes, okay? is you make a query or you add information and you always receive a domain layer. You always receive a domain object, okay? For example, I can use, an, if here is an implementation with Realm, an implementation with Retrofit, and Realm work with a Realm model, and Retrofit wait with a Retrofit object. We don't have an, an infection of Realm, or well, an infection of uh, retrofit for all applications, okay? Because this is crazy. A lot of people using Firebase and just buy Firebase object in his views, but when Firebase don't scale, you say, oh no, I need to change all my software, and I are dearly, dearly coupled to the Firebase, and this is ugly. But right now, if I have Firebase only in this one, okay, this is really easy, because Firebase is there. If I want to change Firebase for retrofit for or, or custom API, I only need to change the data source. And uh, we add to the we add two things to the to the repository pattern. The first one is the catcher level, it's similar to a computer catcher level. Is okay. We are going to first to the memory cache. Is the information is not in the memory cache? I'm going to the API, and it's in the API I return. And I have a TTL, a time to life. When the time to life is pure, spur, uh, I'm going to the next one, and I'm going to return. And we have a populator. Populator is where the caches. It's good enough for me when information comes from the API, take this information and store in the realm. I store in the realm or in cache memory or in whatever. Okay? And we are storing this information for you, and this is going to be easy. Uh, this is more or less the code. Okay. okay, one minute, okay? One, two minutes. Okay, I'm going to faster, but you have two repositories. Uh, you can add repositories, okay? Are we, for example, from from React or from Cache, and we have we have we have methods about the repositories. Okay, get information, get all, update information. It's making all this for you and the population, at Cache levels, all this code that we write one, one, and one, and ever is all make it. And we give you some data source created. For example, this is a memory data source. You don't need to create your caches. It's created for you. It's for T. We have uh, one from Realm too. And I want to create one for retrofit, okay? And well, this is how the populate works, how populated the, the information uh, in the caches, okay? And this is uh, uh, and this is the, how the how works the the cache levels, okay? Some conclusions: This is not super valid. Don't work for everything, okay? Uh, it's easy why new features because only focus into your domain and your views and your data. Uh, it's Thought for new projects, please don't change your code. Forgot about concurrency because it's managed for the system. Uh, it's easy to write tests. And it's open source if you want to uh, contribute or use is, uh, or take only some part of the code, it's there for you. We don't have time for questions, sorry, but I'm going to be there 
uh, if you if you want to make some question please tell me okay thank you very much